Eric here with the Perkins Builder Brothers. Today's video is gonna be all about layout. So if you're gonna build a house or a deck or a shed or anything, you need to know about layout for your floors, walls, and roof. So we're gonna break this down into three parts. Why you need a layout, the different types of layouts, the common types, and number three, how to lay things out on center. And that's the biggest mystery that I found hiring new people to work for us. You could be making more money if you're in the construction field and you learn how to do this correctly. Your boss is gonna really appreciate it. Okay, part one, why do you need layout? And that's so that your walls have an even uniform strength. There's a stud equally spaced all through the walls or a floor joist equally spaced all through the floor that has a uniform strength. Number two is that those spaces will line up on every floor, floor to floor, if you keep them all in the same layout. So your floor joists, then your studs, then your rafters are all lined up so there's an even open bay for your mechanical systems or your wires to run through your walls, through your floors, through your roof without something getting in the way and your mechanical contractors getting really ticked off at you. And number three, this is really important, if you do your layout correctly, all of your sheet goods will fit onto your studs floor joists and rafters without having to cut them. Your eight foot lengths and your four foot lengths will break evenly in the middle of a stud, rafter, or floor joist. And that's super important for your sheeting and also your drywall so you don't have to measure or cut all your sheets. You can just throw down full sheets and get on with it. Okay, let's roll on with part two. Part two and that is the three most common types of layout. That is 16 inches on center, 24 inches on center, and 19.2 inches on center. With 16 inches on center, you're gonna break eight feet into six even spaces. With 19.2 on center, you're gonna break eight feet into five even spaces. And with two foot on center, you're gonna break eight feet into four even spaces. And why does that matter? Well, it matters because most of your sheet goods, like your plywood or your sheetrock, are eight foot increments. And that makes it easy to put your sheet goods on the wall. You got it, you got it, you got it. Clear! Okay, let's expand on that a little bit. Some of your finer sheet goods, like this Advantech subflooring, actually have all of the common types of layout put on them. So I'm gonna pull a tape across here so we can check that out. We're gonna have circles, and they're breaking on your 16 inch increments. We're gonna have 19.2, and by the way, if you can zoom in, that's that little diamond you see on your tape measure there. Those are all your 19.2s. So you have 19.2 on the diamonds. Then we're gonna scroll on down to the squares. Those are your two foot centers. And if we keep going, you'll have, again, circle 16. You'll have a diamond, 19.2, square, 24. And if we go all the way to the end, you see that this sheet is eight foot long and there's something very special about eight foot and I wanna show it to you. So let's come in here. Eight foot just happens to be your diamond, which is right there. It happens to be your red number, which is your 16, and it's also your black number, which is your two foot. So that is why eight foot is so important, and that, that's why these three most common types of layouts all break on that, and that's why they do. Okay, part three, let's talk about the more confusing or more elusive part of this, and that's putting studs or floor joists or rafters on center. Let's show you how to do that. I'm gonna hook on this mock plate, and this would be as if I'm hooking on the outside of a structure and pulling across. We're gonna mark 16 inch center, okay? That's 16 inches, but we don't want our stud edge on this mark, and we need a mark to align our stud edge, because that's what you can see. So I'm gonna mark three quarters, back from that 15 and a quarter and the stud actually goes here that will break this stud three quarters on either side of this center mark and the reason you mark the edge and not the center is that when you install a stud you can still see that line and you can use it to line up the framing square with the plate as in this way you can tell that it's where it's supposed to be if you would have made that mark underneath the center like right through here that mark would be not visible as soon as you put this in, wouldn't be much good to you. Now you can mark one side or the other side or both sides. You really only need one side. And so we're gonna go on down through here. There's stud number one, 32, go back three quarters. There's your stud on center, 48. 
go back three quarters. That's your stud on center. And we'll go on down. This is called quarter set ahead is what I've had a builder tell me before. Quarter set ahead is the name of this because you go from the quarter that's back from your increment. Okay, and what I want you to notice, and this is super important, it's the whole point of this, is that this gets the eight foot stud, and I'll mark both sides of this, exactly centered on the end of your sheet goods, right here. So the center of this sheet good will break exactly in the center of your stud, and that's super important because now we can start with our next sheet good going this way, and it will have something to bear on, which is the whole point of this and uh, I hope everybody can understand that from what I just said. Okay, let me talk to you about one other really quick important thing, and that's cutting your plates to the right length. <laughs> I like to cut the plates to exactly 16 feet or exactly eight feet if you can. Most plates do not come exactly eight or 16 feet, even though that's the nominal length. Let's check this one. All right, 16 and 3 eighths is what this plate measures from the factory. So we're gonna clip that at 16 even. The reason being, when we butt our tape into the end of this plate to lay out our next wall, our tape will already be on center of layout. I'm gonna make a quick note that the stud on the outside of your structure will not split on center. It will actually have the edge on the center because you don't want your stud sticking out three quarters past the rest of your structure. So that stud will be an inch and a half in right there. Before I do the regular layout, what I usually do is lay out all the windows and the doors in the wall so I don't get confused with these while I'm doing that. I'm going to do one for you so you can kind of get the general gist of how that happens. I'm going to mark a center point for a door and we're going to do CL for center line. I'm going to do a, say an exterior door, a 36 inch door would be a 38 inch rough opening, two inches extra on your door openings. So that's 19 inches either side of center. I'm going to make a mark at zero with my tape held centered on 19 and a mark at 38. And either side of those will be your jack, which is a J. I uh, can't write it upside down. Uh, and then we're going to go an inch and a half and a king stud. So we're going to go jack stud. That's one side. And then we're going to come over here. Same thing. Jack. Inch and a half. Three inches. King stud. Okay, so now we have our two jacks and we have a 38 inch rough opening for a 36 inch door to fit in this opening. Over top of this door, I'm gonna change my X's to C's and that stands for cripple. And those are the little blocks that go in above or below your header to finish the wall to the top plate above your door. Okay, I'm gonna show you a bit of framing that we've already got done on this project and how the studs break on center. So if we butt to the outside of the structure, which is the inside of the wall sheeting and run our tape out here, you'll see that our studs are breaking exactly centered on 32, 48, 16 if you pan down here. Uh, and so these studs are all on center, so they line up with all the rest of the framing on the rest of the house. Okay, I do want to note that in a lot of cases we use a combination of layouts. For instance, these rafters, they're there, and in the middle are 24 inches on center. These studs, they're there, they're there, there, are 16 inches on center, and this rafter will break right in the center of this stud bay. That's okay because this wall, 16 inch on center, with a double top plate, has enough structural strength with the double top plate to carry that load. Thanks for watching my video today. I hope it gave you a little more insight into why you do different layouts and how to do layout and how to do on center correctly. Uh, remember to subscribe to our channel, click the bell so you get our future videos. Peace, see ya.